Hi, and welcome to question eight of the 2019 paper two for the Leavenstar Ordinary Level. As usual, if you want the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. If you want to, that email address, it should be in the description below as well. Okay, so question eight here, part A is asking us to find the volume of a sphere. I put the formula in here, okay, from the uh, math tables, just for handiness sake. It says a solid sphere of radius three centimeters is placed inside a cylinder and then water is poured into the cylinder until it's full as shown in the diagram. And part one doesn't involve that full situation. It's just saying find the volume, this is the important bit here, of the sphere. So that's our shape. And it says in terms of pi, so just you don't need to convert to a decimal. You leave the answer in terms of pi. So it's very good. So we use our formula, so we'll go straight to the answer here. <clears throat> so we have the volume of the sphere is given by this formula. The radius is 3. Okay, we're told that up here. And that's the only input we need to put into the formula. So once I put it in, you can multiply the 4 over 3 times 3 to the power of 3, so that's 27. Now calculator do it for me. Gives me an answer of 36 pi. Don't need to convert to decimal. So I'm just including the units and its volume, so it's cubed, and the units were centimeters. Happy days. So a nice easy 10 marks in a way. Now part two is saying the sphere is now dropped, or sorry, removed. Okay. So the volume is going to go down. Okay, so that's what the second time you know, ground is trying to get across. It says the internal radius of the cylinder. So it's the bigger shape here. So the cylinder is five, whatever, uh, centimeters probably. Yeah. Find the drop in centimeters in the height of water. So basically, if you know the volume of the entire thing, Okay, and then take away the volume of the sphere. Okay, you can get the, the new volume and then work out the height. Actually, no, it's even easier than that, sorry. <clears throat> the volume of this section here, okay, is the same as the volume of the sphere. You can put them equal. So let's go through the answer. So the volume of the sphere is the same as the volume in the, of the dr water drop, whatever. That water drop is given by the formula for the volume of the cylinder, pi r squared h. The radius there is 5. Now, the height is we don't know. But we do know the volume. Okay, that's 36 pi. So we know everything except the height. That's our unknown. So we put our information in. Okay, so 36 pi is equivalent to pi times 5 squared by we don't know, by the height. If I bring the pi 5 squared over, okay, whole thing's been multiplied here so they can be come across and all be divided in the far side. End up here, put that through the calculator, and I got 1.44. It doesn't ask me to round that, uh, but I'm going to put the units in, and the units are centimeters. And that's it. So if you get what's been asked, it's fairly straightforward. Okay, um, remember all the formulas for this kind of stuff, uh, most of them anyway, are in the math tables. Now part two here is showing me the shape. So it says the cylinder has a height of 18 centimeters. Okay, so that was the cylinder. Oh, excuse me, bad drawing, but that's a kind of cylinder. Okay, and that's 18. I'm just trying to visualize it in my head. The curved surface area of the cylinder is cut from a rectangular piece of metal measuring 35 by 20. Okay, so that big thing there is the sheet of metal, and they're cutting out the um, material required for the cylinder and then kind of basically turning around so it meets itself so in one sense that inner thing here is the net of the uh, cylinder um now if it's the cylinder we know that the radius here is it's going to be necessary okay the height there is 15. so we're asked to find out how much metal will be left over when the curved surface area of the cylinder is cut out so we need to know the curved surface area of the cylinder, take that away from the total area, so that's the rectangle, and we're left with our answer. So the length of the um, cylinder, go back here, the length all the way around here, this is the same as this bit here. Okay, Let's see what I'm getting across. It's the same as the, the circumference of that circle. I'm going to work that out first, so 2 pi r, now we know the radius there was 5, we were given that for the last thing. Put through the calculator, I got 10 pi. And I don't need to go decimal if I don't want to. I can leave that till the end. 
the area of the right angle is length by width, okay, which is 35 by 20, okay. The area of the smaller right angle, we find out that that length there is 10 times pi by the 18, okay, so it's 10 pi by 18, gives me 180 pi. So we're looking for the difference between those two, okay, so 700 take away 180 pi, and you get an answer of 134.51. Round that to one decimal place, one next number prior to it stays the same. So it's 134.5, and the units are area, so it's centimeter squared. Okay, so that's uh, a, a part three. Now we're on to 8B. Now 8B here is a question on most likely on um, hypothesis testing. This came up like the last two or three years in a row, so I would expect it won't begin. Um, so they can be fairly straightforward if you get the hang of them. Uh, if you go every year on paper uh, two, around question eight or nine, you'll get an example of this. If you look back at the playlist on 2018 and 2017, you'll get other examples. Anyway, in September 2018, a European Commission report stated that it is considering a proposal to abolish daylight saving time. This would mean that the clocks would not go forward one hour in March and then not go back one hour the following October. A transition year class carried out a survey to find out local people's views on the proposal. The class surveyed a random sample of 800 people in the local area. Find the margin of error in the survey. Give your answer as a percentage, correct to two decimal places. Now, unless I'm mistaken, but I'm almost certain, the margin of error formula is not given in the maths tables. I'm not actually sure why, but that's the formula there. Okay, so the N is the number of people surveyed. So the larger N is, the less the margin of error. You're going to practice in your calculator. You put in 1 divided by the square root of 100, 1 divided by the square root of 1,000, and 1 divided by the square root of 10,000. You'll see this margin of error getting smaller and smaller and smaller each time. And we'd know that from you know, statistics. The larger the sample size, the more um, you know, effective it is. So usually polls for political things will be, they'd survey 1,000 people. and They'll give you around a 3% margin of error. Let's calculate what it is, okay, so it's 1 divided by the square root of 800, that came out as 0 0.03, whatever, and they want it as a percentage, okay, so we have to multiply that by 100, and then we round it back to two dozen places, so I rounded it back to the 5 here, and we rounded it, brought that up to 4. So you move the decimal place twice, because you multiply by 100, so you get 3.54, that's the answer. And fairly straightforward now we're probably most likely to need this answer in the next thing in the survey 350 people said they supported the eu proposal to abolish daylight saving time use your answer to part b1 so the thing just above to create a 95 percent confidence interval for the percentage of the population who supported the eu proposal now in um you're looking basically to find out what percentage okay uh supported Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is dividing 350 by the 800. That gives me basically 43.75%. They supported it. Okay, you know, they're looking now to go, well, what was the, the what was the margin of error? What was the lowest number of people based on this survey that would have supported it? And the highest number. So we're taking away the 3.54%, okay, and adding 3.54%. So you kind of said that there. Um, and then... So you're basically adding one and taking away one. Now do the maths of that, I got 47.29% and 40.21%. So your actual figure is somewhere between those two. Um, assuming your data is collected right and all that kind of other statistical stuff. So again, it's pretty straightforward if you know this p hat plus the margin of error, p hat, take away the margin of error. Okay, and it's just, uh, I suppose it's a specific method. Um, so if I mask going for it here, even using this previous answer or calculating this 43.75 would get you like the low partial. So even in a question like this, that could take a lot of time to get used to. It took me a long time to get kind of used to the way they're asking it. Um, the practice obviously makes perfect. Okay, and doing the examples from the previous years will make it easier. Now the next part, part uh, was it B part three. This is the trickier one. Only five marks going for it, okay? But a local newspaper had reported that 50% of people in the area supported the EU proposal. Use your answer to part B, part two, 
above to conduct a hypothesis test at the 5% level of significance okay, to test the newspaper's claim. Clearly state your conclusion in the context of the question and give a reason for your conclusion. So there's a hell of a lot going on here. To reduce back to five marks, because these things usually aren't answered very well. I'm going to go straight to my answer because I don't want to mess with writing it. We need to come up with um, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. That's basically how this is done. That's what a hypothesis test is. As hard as hypothesis is to say. So they're saying the hypothesis is that 50% of people support the EU proposal. The alternative is that less than or diff not 50% okay, support. Okay, so if we look at the test done in part two, even within the, within the margin of error, it was between 40.21% up as far as 47.29%. So 50% does not lie within that range. Okay, therefore the uh, null hypothesis is not true and we reject it. Okay. If this range from the previous thing had been, 50% had lain lane within, lane's a word, lain within the, uh, the range, it would have been acceptable. It, it didn't because Obviously, it's not. And then the the reason is percentage of people was not equal to 50%. It was equal to, actually, in, in essence, that's the conclusion. Okay. Um, the reason is just kind of stating the obvious fact. Okay. That 50% does not lie between those two numbers. Right. That's it. So that's question eight. Okay. So see you on question nine.